If you've been working with Shell in .NET MAUI, then you probably know that it can be a bit of a pain to manage all the routes and stuff, but not anymore with this plugin that uses source generators. Let's go check that out. For those of you who don't know what Shell is, you've probably already used it without you even knowing because it's part of the default templates in .NET MAUI. It is a concept that was already built during the Xamarin Informs era, but now it's in .NET MAUI and it's kind of like your opinionated implementation on how navigation should work, um, how things show up in your menu structure inside of your application, top tabs, bottom tabs, inside of your flyout menu, that kind of stuff. Um, so it is really easy and really powerful stuff to get your app started with that. But if you've looked into it and use all the power that Shell has to offer, namely the URL type navigation that is built in, which is really cool, then you probably already know that the URLs are kind of like magic strings, right? And that's typically something that we want to avoid. So we can get around that by using the name of of the pages and register routes that way. But still, it feels kind of like not great. But now there is a plugin to make things a little bit better, um, at least in terms of like managing your things. It uses source generators to generate the routes in a static class that you can use inside of your application to go to a certain page and whatnot. Let's just dive into the demo and show you what this is all about. So here we are in Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to show you this today on Windows and also running the Windows.NET MAUI client, but this lives in the .NET MAUI layer, the abstraction layer. So this works out of the box for all the platforms that are supported, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS. You don't need to do anything special. It will work on those platforms without needing to change a thing. So um, here, this is just a new .NET MAUI project. I can run this and you will see the new template that we introduced for .NET 8 with the cool race car with the eight on it, little Easter egg there, and the button that will increment whenever we click on it, right? So we've got all that. Now let me add a very simple page and show you like the very basic mechanics of shell. Like I said, without you even knowing, you're probably already using it because you can see app shell right in here, right? So that's there in the template. If I add a new page, so right click on my project, add new item, I go to the .NET MAUI pane here on the left, and we see all the things specific to .NET MAUI. Let's do a content page and let's call this some page, right? Doesn't really matter. So we get a new page with XAML. You can do it in code if that's what you want. Welcome to some page, right? So welcome to some page. So now we have this one and we can actually get here by now doing URL navigation. So go to slash some page. So to do that, we can go back to our main page, go back to our code behind. So let's go to my solution explorer main page code behind. And instead of this button to increment it, let's do some navigation here. So let's remove this code, this code. And what it can do here now is a shell dot current. So we have a current um, object that represents our shell of the application. Um, of course, if you want to be a good citizen and use MVVM and view models, then you probably want to make this into a service and inject that inside of your view model, right? So dot current dot go to a sync. And we had got a couple of overloads here, but the most easy one is just specifying a string here that goes to some page. You can also do like the URL with slash and dot dot slash and that kind of stuff. But you can also do in the simplest form, same page, some page, excuse me. And now it will go to some page. Well, actually I need to register the route first. So this won't work just yet. Um, so go to my solution explorer again, you can register the routes anywhere, but kind of like your typical place to do it would be in the app shell. Um, so here we can have the app shell and we can say routes. Actually is routing dot register route. And we can say some page and we can say um, type of some page. So now it knows like, hey, we have this some page route. And uh, then whenever we see that route, whenever someone navigates to it, we need to get that uh, some page um, 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 out of our code base, and that will be used to navigate to. And then this, of course, this key has to correspond with uh, whatever we navigate to here, right? So it doesn't really need to correspond to whatever that page is called, but typically that is how you would do it. So if I run this now and we click the button, then now it will go to this some page, right? We will see this new page coming up um, and it will go to the some page. And I think there will automatically be a button to go back as well, um, because this just uses a navigation page um, 
under the hood, basically. So if I do this, you can see welcome to some page and here I have this button to go back. So now I can go back and forth. So now we have this URL type navigation, but you probably already also mentioned like, hmm, Gerald, this isn't really great. Like if I'm going to change something here with um, uh, changing this register route to some page one, now it's not picked up here with this some page uh, go to async and now suddenly things are broken because if it can't find it, then it's not going to do anything, right? It's maybe going to give something in my output like, hey, I cannot find this route, but otherwise nothing will happen. So that's not great. Now, what you could do, obviously, to make this already a little bit better is to, um, if you want to keep the same name for like your page and um, the routes anyway, then you can say, hey, I want to use name of some page and now we're good, right? Whenever something changes, this will automatically be picked up and um, everything will fall back in line or at least it will break at compile time and not runtime. So um, now everything will be all right again. We can do the same thing here, name of some page and boom, we're done right now it works again. But if you are going to use this in a more MVVM context, and you're really strict about like, you know, not breaking the MVVM pattern, if you're now going to reference pages inside of your view models, that's a big no, no, right? That's not something that you want to do. Look, it works again. So what you could do is kind of like place all your routes inside of a um, um, static class and reference things from there, use magic strings or the names of whatever you want to do there. Um, but still that not feels great because you know, you have to maintain that yourself. And that's kind of like where source generators come in. So my good friend Julian has created this cool package that will generate this for you automatically. So let's see how that works. I actually already installed it on my project right here. But let me just show you real quickly, right click on your project, manage new packages and you want to search for epj dot actually I have it here in my history probably oh there it already was see he has a couple of other plugins so definitely go check that out as well but here he has the route generator uh, make sure that you have the include pre-release checkbox on um, for the time being at least because it's only in pre-release right now and this automatically generates root names for navigation based on a class name convention for .NET MAUI applications. So I already installed it, else install it, and it will do that for you um, automatically, all the things that are needed. Then what you want to do is go over to your MAUI program, and we need to add a little attribute here. So what you need to do here is do auto roots, you can already see it, and then we can specify a suffix. So now we do page, and with this we kind of configure that everything, all the pages that end with page um, inside of our project will get a root generated. So I think whenever I start building this, actually, maybe it does it without building. If I go to dependencies here, and then windows and analyzers, you can already see a note with the name of this plugin. That's how source generators work. You can see the code that is generated in here. And we can inspect what is going on. So we have this one analyzer here. And you can see it does roots.g.cs. The g is for generated. So we have this. And you can already see it picked up on main page page and some page. So it created that for me, this const string main page, it does work with magic strings, but that now matters less. Because when something gets renamed, this entry goes away for the main page. And we have breaking changes because we're referencing that main page, right? So that's something that will be picked up automatically now still and this is done automatically. So we don't need to maintain that ourselves. We also get a public property for all routes. Um, so you can get a list of all the routes that are in here. It's probably something that will come in useful at some point. So what we can do now, we have this auto routes page. And what we can do now, we still have to register it. I think there will be a nice opportunity here for also to the source generator to register routes um, from that same plugin. That will be super cool that you don't need to maintain it yourself as well. Um, and what we can do now is here say routes dot some page. You can see that we have IntelliSense, everything, main page, some page, all the things are here. And you can just reference that from this thing right here. So we can do that. And the same um, thing on like the navigation side. So here we can do routes dot some page, right? And if I go back in now, it won't be a surprise that it still works, right? Because you know, this ties everything together. And we can navigate from one to the other, whenever something changes, whenever I'm going to rename um, the some page, um, now, um, this will suddenly generate something else, our source generator will do some page something, and it will break our build at compile time. And you know, something's up, I need to 
fix something. So that is really powerful stuff. Now, one more thing, um, what you want to do, like now you probably have some page at some point, that's always how it happens. That is the exception to the uh, suffix thing. So you don't want to name something page because you want to do this dashboard. We're going to add a new item, which is going to be called dashboard. So let's do dashboard dot xaml right so we get that in there and now nothing gets generated because it doesn't have that page suffix um so let's change this text right here to something important did you subscribe subscribe to my channel yet maybe maybe that's something youtube channel like and subscribe down below so there's this new cool youtube feature where i say subscribe down below that the subscribe button lights up does it do that for you let me know down in the comments that would be super cool so did you subscribe to my channel yet maybe that's something that you want to do but now we have this dashboard and what you can do is go back to the maui program and we have this extra attribute with like the extra was it extra extra route see there it is and now we can just uh, um, register something that we want to do in here. So we have this dashboard right here. Um, of course, this kind of like breaks whatever we were, we were trying to do here, um, because now it, you know, um, we are specifying this dashboard thing um, as a thing, and we, we are kind of like moving this um, uh, magic string from here to, to another place. Um, but, you know, it's still nicer than having to maintain that yourself, and it's probably not going to be renamed at some point anyway. So uh, now what we can do is also have this route, so we have this dashboard right here, so that's there. And we want to, of course, do this dashboard and we can now navigate to the dashboard from here as well just to show you that it works and to give you one more reminder that you want to probably subscribe to my channel um, so this is how you can use this cool plugin to make the routes uh, that management basically of your down at maui shell application so much easier this seems pretty useful, right? No more manual management of all the shell routes right there. It feels a little bit cleaner, although, you know, it's kind of like still the same thing, but managed for you at least, and it will be generated automatically. And everything that's generated by your computer will be much less prone to errors than when you're doing something yourself, right? So that's a big win. And the less I have to type myself, the happier a developer I am. Julian, thank you so much for creating another wonderful package to enrich our .NET MAUI ecosystem. The community loves you, or at least I do. And Julian also writes a lot of wonderful blog posts, including one about this great package. You can find it down in the comments below, so make sure to check that out. And um, I have some thoughts about this package. It's like, it would be super cool to also have the route registration through this package, right? So that you don't have to worry about that as well, and that goes automatically. So we'll see what the future of this package brings. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and i'll be seeing you for my next video which might be this one see you for the next one <laughs>